TikTok is, you know, TikTok came on, and that's another thing too, is that you're now eighty thousand followers on yeah. TikTok. You're at like sixty seven thousand or sixty something. I think like sixty one. Sixty one thousand, mm-hmm. and and when it, TikTok first came on the scene. I, along with so many people, were like, this thing is going to be here and it's going to be gone. Mm -hmm. And it came and it changed the entire platforms. It changed Instagram. It changed Facebook. It changed YouTube. Now it's changing LinkedIn. It's just crazy how this one platform that everyone thought wasn't like this big of a deal, like completely changed, you know, everything. Welcome to the Willpower Podcast, where we uncover the secrets of success and share the wisdom of exceptional individuals. I'm your host, William Gomez. And as a real estate professional, I bring you insights from the world of real estate and beyond. Join me as I engage in captivating conversations with incredible guests from diverse backgrounds and industries, from top real estate moguls to trailblazing entrepreneurs and influencers. We dive into the mindsets and habits of successful people. If you love what you hear, don't forget to rate and review. Get ready to be inspired, motivated, and enlightened. Live life today on willpower. Katie and Brooke, thank you so much for being here. I'm super excited to, to have you guys on and, and, and get to know you guys a little bit better. Uh, Brooke, you, you've been on here before, so this is no uh, strange place to you. You've been here, your episode number 30. Yes. And your episode actually performed really, really well. You were like the first influencer that I had on here. And, and one of the first few uh, girls that I had on here, so I'm not sexist to anybody that is watching. <laughs> and I, I I had such a fun conversation, so yeah. I was like, hey, come on and, and bring a friend. And now, Katie, I'm super excited uh, to k- get to know a little bit about your story, but I might even think about having you on by yourself and kind of going into um, about talking about just what you've been able to do at 25 years old. You're on your second house. You're on Business Insider. And uh, you flipped both houses, right? Yeah. And then from what Mary was telling me, who I just had on the podcast late earlier this week, is that you do like a lot of it yourself. Mm-hmm. I can't even hang a picture. Like, yeah. how, hey. how do you, how do you do that? So I'm my so first- amazed by you, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. My first house. So my mom is in commercial construction. So she gave me a lot of expertise on my first project. And then my uncles are home builders. So I kind of just like learned from them, watched what they did. And so then this new house, I act as general contractor. So I do subcontract out a lot of the work. So like I'm not laying tile when I move walls. I'm not going to move walls (laughs) or like anything like plumbing, electrical. But the smaller stuff, I honestly just watch TikToks. I don't even watch YouTube videos because... um, they're long and I want to just like see something in 15 seconds and do it. So I just watch it and then go for it. And it's usually pretty chaotic, which is why I started (laughs) recording it and it's been fun. Yeah. I feel like I've learned a lot of skills that, um, I didn't know like six months ago when I bought this house. So it's been a learning process. Yeah. So TikTok is, you know, TikTok came on, and that's another thing too, is that you're now 80,000 followers on yeah. TikTok. You're at like 67,000 or 60 something. I think like 61. 61,000. Mm-hmm. And, and when it, TikTok first came on the scene, mm-hmm. I, along with so many people, were like, this thing is going to be here and it's going to be gone. Mm-hmm. And it came and it changed the entire platforms. It changed Instagram, yeah. it changed Facebook, it changed YouTube. Now it's changing LinkedIn. It's just crazy how this one platform that everyone thought wasn't like this big of a deal, like completely changed, you know, everything. And so now in order to stay ahead, because everybody just kind of copied them, they're actually trying to compete with Amazon with their TikTok shop. And they're trying to compete with Google with their SEO, Mm -hmm. which funny that you say, like, I just learned from TikTok videos because before that people would say, I learned from YouTube videos or I would learn from just Googling it. But now even I catch myself, like whenever I'm wanting to like know about something, I'd rather watch like a short Short. video. Mm -hmm. I like short form and learn on it and learn about it. So and so if anybody wants to know Brooke a little bit more, you can go back to her episode, episode three. The only b- th- big thing that has changed is that you're engaged now, right? Or I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you, you, I was like, what? News like, to me. This is news to me. <laughs> you've been, you've, you've been posting enough about that year. So maybe if you're, if you're, future fiance's listening. Yes. Maybe this is the sign. This, this is, is the, the sign. sign. <laughs> We're ready. 
<laughs> so Katie, for yeah. people that have never heard your name, give me a little introduction of just a little bit more about you. Like what made you get into TikTok and just tell us a little bit of what's going on. Yeah. So I'm Katie and I'm a 25 year old software developer. I graduated from OU in 2020. So TikTok kind of came on the scene when I was a senior in college. So I was actually pretty late to the game when it came to TikTok because I was a late adopter. I was like, this is not going to last. And me and my friends just like would make funny videos of us at like our college house and that kind of stuff. And I deleted that account. Like it was just like a silly little one. And then I would just kind of watch as a like secret follower for a long time. <laughs> and then about a year and a half ago, I work a really technical job, but I am super creative and I love to create, um, which is why I love renovating houses. And so I was like, maybe I should start making TikTok videos because Instagram just wasn't there wasn't enough creative freedom for me, I guess. And I got really nervous posting anything outside of like my norm on Instagram because I've had the same account since middle school. And so I was like, people are going to make fun of me basically. So I just started posting TikTok videos and it kind of evolved. Um, I love Tulsa. And so it evolved into making videos about Tulsa. And then when I bought a house about my house, when I do stuff with my dog, stuff about my dog. So I've just kind of tried to stay really true to myself on my TikTok and not really have a niche. Um, I just want my niche to be myself. So it, I kind of like, it kind of just moves with how I move and um, I get waves of like followers coming in. So I had a big wave when I started doing a lot of Tulsa content. I've had a wave with home content. I've had a big wave with my dog, Macy. So it's um, been really natural and it's not something really planned, so it's kind of been crazy. Yeah. I've been trying to pull that out of her onto Instagram. Yeah. It's been working. <laughs> yes, I'm so. trying harder. So that's what Mary said as well, too. She said Same that she, like, Mary, yeah. Yeah. you know, blew up on, on TikTok, mm -hmm. and it was hard for her to, to... But what's crazy is that whatever you post on Instagram, if it gets any type of traction, you really look at the analytics and maybe 10% of your actual followers are watching that. Mm -hmm. Everybody yeah. else are people that don't know you. Yep. Yeah. And it's crazy. So one of the things that I, I looked at your stuff and you you post pretty much, do you post ev everything that you post on TikTok over on, on? Pretty much. And then you've grown your account since last time you were here. You're now at almost 12,000 followers. Yeah. Congrats on that. <laughs> I, the, the, I think you may have given me that suggestion actually. yeah because i was like i post across everything because yeah. i'm like it, it's not easy creating content and right maybe it so won't hit on one but if you're putting it on several exactly i just posted another. i posted a video about uh can kim kardashian um afford to buy a home just because people don't know that people that have a lot of money still get mortgages f to be able to not have to pay taxes on that yeah. to be able to have a lot of you know liquid cash and and the biggest one that it hit was facebook and Facebook, Facebook has been literally my, I, I grew that, that from, I think I had like 300 followers because they have, you have followers and you have friends mm -hmm. and then, and then it grew to like over 50,000 followers. And I'm like, I didn't even know that this was a thing, but Is then it your personal account or do you have a separate business? It's account? my personal account. Wow. And that's yeah. my biggest thing that's been, when I talk to agents, um, I work with a lot of real estate agents and they're, you know, they're trying to do Instagram. They're trying to do TikTok, they're trying to do everything, but they're like, I just don't know what to do, like where to start. And I, I think that a lot of, uh, one of the biggest mistakes people make is that they try to create like another account uh, to, mm -hmm. especially a business account. Because I mean, there's been nothing out there that has said this in, in writing or anything, but I truly believe that if you have a business account, they're going to expect for you to pay a little bit to show your stuff out yeah. there. And so one of the things that I'm pretty I'm pretty intrigued by is that you said, and you said it, you don't have a niche. How do you feel like you, you kind of grew? Because I, I, one of the biggest things is for me, when people ask me like, how did you grow your account? I say, is because I have a niche. Like, yeah. you know, people watch a video and they go, um, I recently watched a, a guy on TikTok that he, he tells a story of he's him meeting a celebrity. Mm -hmm. And then the story just like takes like a, left turn of like just super crazy and then you just you're like what just happened <laughs> and then I went into his page and it's all that but yeah. I was like obsessed with it I yeah. watched like 12 of his videos because <laughs> yeah. every single thing was the same he has like 700,000 followers and I'm like this makes sense mm -hmm. so how do you how did you like talk to me about that like not having a niche yeah so when I started my account that was one of the things I was really serious about so I watched all the videos that were like how to grow a TikTok account and the number one thing was to have a niche but I didn't want it to feel unnatural to me at any point. So I was worried that if I did 
kind of choose a niche and box myself in, um, it wouldn't be natural to who I am and what I'm going through. So like as my phases of life change, I want it to be able to change with me. Um, I do work a 40 hour work week, so I don't want to have to also pencil in like three hours of going out and trying new Tulsa restaurants. So I post Tulsa restaurants whenever I go to them, but I'm not going out of my way unless there's something really cool I want to try. Um, You're not going to Oklahoma City every weekend? <laughs> That's actually really fun. Do you, I do. <laughs> do you have a second home over there, Brooke? <laughs> I need to. You're tearing up the Turner oh Turnpike, girl. What How kidding? often are you out there? Um, Gosh, I was supposed, like, if I would do everything that I'm asked at least three to four times a week. But wow. I'm like, the, the drive, it's just so boring yes it's bad <laughs> yeah, you can so go up to like 90 though on some one on the three way yes but oh my gosh that's how i was telling my boyfriend uh <laughs> the other day i was like we make this drive so much I oh just, so he goes with you every time a lot of the times so i was nice. like i just wish that there was an easier quicker way to get there because yeah it, i need a second home there so why are you going to oklahoma city so much is there not enough restaurants enough things here to be like sponsored by or, or like what why are you there going out there is, so much but i also don't want to just be in oklahoma oh you oh so, yeah you talked about that last yeah, time yeah how's um, that been going um it's going yeah <laughs> um like katie said i do have a full-time job so it, it's still hard to make that time uh, i'm driving to oklahoma city 6 p.m coming back and then going to work at 6 a.m the next day so wow. um I, we're still working on it. I do have limitations because I gotta make a living. Yeah. Um, but that is still the goal is to grow outside of Oklahoma. So is the goal for either of you guys to make this your full time job? No. No. Maybe. Maybe. And I'm, then, I'm open to it. Yeah. <laughs> do you, do you do you still enjoy it? Because you've been doing it for a while. Yes. Yes. It's so fun. It's funny that whenever you came on, I was asking you if you were like the only one that was doing it because I was like so out of the loop, and now I've even had you know, just strict uh, uh, influencers on the, just because I'm just like, I'm curious to know everybody's take on like how they're, uh, how they're even adapting to the changes because there's so many changes mm -hmm. all the time. So one of the things that I've noticed with you is that, Brooke, is that you uh, do collab with, with a lot of people and, and you're doing that a lot. So mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that. Like the reason for doing it and like if it works, it's, if it's easier, if it's harder, like talk to me a little bit about that. I think it depends on who I'm working with. There's ones that are, and I'm sure you can agree with this. There's ones that are like, you have free reign to do the, whatever the, you want. The, the sponsors or whatever. Yes. What would you call them? The, 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 Partner? the partners yeah. that, Partner. the, yeah. The partners. So yeah, I've seen some of those contracts. Some of those can some be. Some of those contracts are, I'm like, oh my gosh. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Yeah. I know. I was like, <laughs> I need to take a class on this. I yeah, like how to read the contract because yeah. some of those are so confusing. There's so much that goes into it. And I almost wish I had a preview of it before committing because sometimes I'll get those contracts and be like, this is, they're asking way too much out of me. Can yeah. we make this a bullet point thing yeah. instead of like paragraphs? <laughs> Six pages of yeah. all the things you can do, you can't do, when it's due, so things. some of them will say you cannot bring anybody else on, mm -hmm. which is crazy because wouldn't that be more, more like audiences for them? They're not having to pay them. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, I would think it would benefit them. Like I am worth so much, but if I have you, like we're like doubling yeah. where it could go. So what do you, do you like collaborating rather than doing it by yourself or? Yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, if I collaborate, a lot of the times, like, there's a monetary thing that comes with it. Gotcha. Rather than if I'm doing it on my own, I still love it. But, like, most of the time, I'm, like, paying out of pocket. It's taking gotcha. personal time away from where I could be hanging out with. So what are some of the new things here in, in Oklahoma that maybe people need to know about? I know last time we, I kind of talked to you, Brooke, a little bit about people coming in, like what's, you know, what are some of the best things here? But I feel like there's been a lot of new things. And even just this morning, I saw somebody post a video. It wasn't even an influencer. It was a realtor posting saying that 
Broken Arrow is getting like a ninety million dollar amphitheater or something. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I I know. Somebody fir- sent that to me too. First time I ever heard about like, that. Where, where is that going? The suburbs are growing <laughs> like crazy. I, I went know. to Jinx, and since I graduated in twenty sixteen, it is a completely different place. Yeah. I mean, and now they're adding like the River District, or I don't Ten I don't District. I mean, that like chicken and pickle type mm-hmm. place. Yes. Adding yeah. there, the outlet malls mm-hmm. and, they're adding. and Owasso's grown like crazy broken arrows grown like crazy all i think about that when i see that i think it's like cool because we'll have newer stuff but all i think about is how much is going to be how much is my next house going to be oh my yeah gosh, or yeah. how bad is the traffic going to be that's another thing yeah i think i'd rather stay in traffic a little longer than pay an extra hundred thousand dollars though Same. i don't know if it gets anything like dallas traffic Oh yeah, that's that's always vibe. tough. That's <laughs> always tough. So yeah, tell me a little bit about what some new places that people need to know about. Goodness, well, you've I'm excited been to try Noche. Yeah, I haven't been, but I saw like when is that maybe, opening? Um, I think maybe tomorrow, maybe today. This week, yeah. yeah. Oh wow! But I saw I saw a bunch of girls that went and tried it, and it looks really good. But um, what else? <laughs> we tried Momos. That's new. Momos was so good. The Chop House thing. Yes. I haven't been. It's out south, which it's by, my parents live out south, and there's not a ton of options for, like, nicer dining. You have to kind of go into Midtown or even at least, like, 51st. So I think it's a really good option at, like, 101st and Memorial. Yes. Yeah. You're starting to sound like Mae West when she's, she's like, I can't, I live in Jinx, and she's (laughs) like, she's like, uh, I have to take a road trip to go to your house. I love South Tulsa still. Like, that's where I grew up, and I think they both offer really great things i just for the time being i like midtown (laughs) yeah so uh are you done with your home renovation no my hope is to add a third bathroom but i'm waiting until rates drop i'm gonna refi i have quite a bit of equity after what you've already done um no so my house appraised for a lot more than i bought it for really Mm -hmm. wow that's awesome and you bought it like six months ago or something like that Mm -hmm. right may 1st which is not i mean we're starting to see a little bit more houses come over but we, I mean, we just, uh, as we were walking in here, I talked to uh, Jordan, the guy on my team, and we had an appraisal come in 10,000 short. So mm-hmm. it's, you know, those are still coming in, but that's, that's, uh, it's crazy that, I mean, if you, if yeah. it came up, how much higher did it come up? Like 50,000. Wow. And they nice. called me and was like, I have never seen any, this is crazy. But I think I know. I, I don't think I've seen that either. No. And my, so I tried to buy a first house and I got under contract for it and it fell out like a couple of days before I closed because it came in like 15,000 under appraisal. And I remember being so heartbroken about it. And then I found my next house that ended up being like a better option. And that was during 2020. So rates were at like 2%. So yeah. Um, the only reason I got that house is cause it was super outdated and it was a little overpriced. So I was able to kind of talk that one down, but then this newer one is in a historic neighborhood and it was priced at that appraisal level, but they had thrown gray laminate over the original hardwoods, painted everything gray and it was beautiful. Like it would be beautiful if it was a newer home, but I think the charm of the historic neighborhood is those hundred year old floors and, um, a lot of that old charm and so I think people just came in and didn't see the charm and didn't see that it could be something really pretty and so it sat I texted my mom like March 1st a picture of the link or a link with the picture of it and was like this is my dream house but it's so out of my price range and then a week later it went through a big price reduction so I was like oh something must be seriously wrong with it and my mom's like well you can afford it now (laughs) and so I texted my friend Amy who works at first American and she was like okay well do you want to meet May and I was like sure (laughs) so then May got me in like the next day to see it we put in an offer I had no plans of selling my house it came through as like a contingency and then the next day I listed my house it sold and then it was like happening (laughs) it kind of just like I didn't really think it through but it worked out it worked out so then they came in and I was expecting because it didn't sell that there was going to be all this crazy stuff wrong with it and so I did like as thorough what is it called like a <laughs> inspection, inspection. Sorry, yeah I did like every inspection you can possibly do and they're like no this house is amazing I just like don't think oh, people saw this a sign how long yeah. did it sit there for I think it was like two weeks not that long but um th- there was no one living in it at the time so I think they were really motivated to sell and it just wasn't showing well I guess that's I don't crazy. Know. So Mid-tree. you go to you go to South Tulsa, you go to Jinx, you you 
a lot of people don't like that that most neighborhoods have a homeowners association that you yeah. there's so many rules right mm -hmm. i personally kind of like that just because it, it keeps my neighbor from parking an rv in front yeah. of their house you know but in midtown you don't really have that but it being a historic home do you have some certain things that you have to like if you want to change the house or something i think i've heard no, something so i think one neighborhood over from me has that so you can't paint the outside you can't do any additions without getting like approval, approval basically from, from the, like city. the city yeah but my neighborhood's not the neighborhood itself is historic and um but like our house is we can do what we want it's yeah. kind of interesting there's no like how come some do and some don't? I honestly don't know. Oh, it's weird. Brooke, for your next house, if you could choose, would you move to Oklahoma City or would you still stay stick around here? I wouldn't move into Oklahoma City if I was like going a, like, but you, but in that area. The area. Like in the burbs. I would move to like Edmond. I, I actually just... Have to, I love something Edmund. would really have to convince me, you know? Yeah. I, I love Being a full-time content creator. That may be it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I can't... Uh, who was I? Ta I was talking to another agent that I work with. She lives out in, I think, close to like Manford or something like that, which is probably like 40 minutes away from Tulsa. Yeah, I live in Sand Springs. So, so I'm, Manford is right next to me. What would you say? It's from here? 35 minutes. 35, 35 yeah. minutes. But she's talking, she's constantly having to come in and out. And yeah. she's about to sell that house and then move over here. And she was telling me, she's like, I'm going to be saving like three hours a day. Wow. And I always think about time and I'm like, how, and like, so you go into Oklahoma city, how many, how, how many times are you going a week? Um, multiple. And it's so funny because I was thinking about it. Like last week I went like three times and I was like the amount of time it takes for me to drive there. I'm not even at the event or the collab as long as my drive takes, like I'm driving wow. a total of three hours and I usually end up staying at the event hour and a half, maybe two, because I have to get back to go to work the next day. You should do, do you know Stephen Hester? Yeah. So what he does, he's been going down to Oklahoma City, but he will like just like reach out to people and then make a trip of, and then does everything in, in one, one weekend. Yeah. And he even gets his hotel paid for. Yeah. Wow. I, I've had those. Trips yeah. Where that has worked out. Um, what are some of your favorite places in Oklahoma City? Ooh. I just, I just did some research and, Oklahoma City is in the top, uh, it's the only city in our state that's in the top 50 most populated cities, and like we're like on the very back end. And it's but growing it, like crazy. Yes, and it's still, it's number five of the top five most populated cities that people can afford. Wow. I think the medium income was, uh, or the medium home price was like two... 227 I think and then you have to make like around 60,000 in order to qualify for that as opposed to the number one was San Jose, California and the medium was like 1.6 I want to say for a home yeah and you had oh to, you have to make like 180 what? Nate was it 1.6 or 1.1 do you remember 1.6 million you just have to be like average born home with a million dollars already <laughs> like <laughs> that's how crazy. does anyone buy a house yeah so what what are some of your favorite restaurants out there um, okay, well, this Our one places. isn't a restaurant, but um, it's in Edmond. I think it's called Around Midnight. It's like a little, like, jazz bar. Mm -hmm. It's so oh. cute, and it has, like, Gatsby vibes. I love, I love that, that place. So fun. Um, of course, I do like chicken and pickle just because we don't have that here. Yeah. Is that um, what we're getting, though? I don't think it's the same company, but, yes, it's the same concept. Isn't um, it In the Raw that's doing it? Maybe. Um, I think so. Pickleball yeah. is just like blown up. It's so, it's fun. so fun. Yeah. <laughs> so talking about pickle uh, ball, uh, Stephen is a huge fan of it. Really? And I didn't know there was like professional teams. Oh yes. yeah. Gary V owns a team. Really? Yes. I don't know who that is. Gary V. No. How are you a content creator and you don't know who <laughs> Gary V is? He's Sorry. like this big, guy, this big big like entrepreneur guy, but he's all about. Oh, he was on like Undercover Boss. Oh, cool. I think I don't if know I'm if he was. The same guy, does he own a lot of real estate in Texas? Or um, am I thinking of somebody he, totally different? Yeah, I think you might be thinking of somebody <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking of the Mavs owner. <laughs> no, but, not him. But <laughs> anyways, this guy's like, it's a, he might be a billionaire. He might just be a millionaire. I don't know. But he's just, uh, he, he got his start by um, selling wines online. And people thought like, 
selling like, wine wine yeah oh. like back in like the 90s when people are like nobody's gonna buy anything online and then he blew so up smart. and then and as 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 things uh social media platforms started coming in he's he just went all in and then he's all about you know you got to post and post 10 times a day and you know all uh, he's just we, we got to check him out yeah uh, yeah I'll um, look him up after this and <laughs> so uh, he bought a pickleball team and, and Steven's like, he just loves it. He travels like across the country yeah. to go see these people. And he made a video about the team and they reached out to him what? and That's said, so cool. and said, Hey, would you like to be our mascot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, they said, we'll give you VIP tickets. He's met Gary V at one of the events That's in New so Jersey. Cool. So wow. he is, uh, he's, he's like, he was like this clown for this tournament. <laughs> I ever should have done it videos. on the Golden Bachelor. Did you see that? Oh, they had like a pickleball tournament on the Golden Bachelor, I, and I, the two winners got to be on like Pickleball Today magazine. <laughs> I was like, this is awesome. I could only watch two of those episodes. Oh, I, I could it. It, it, it kind of made me sad. I heard oh, that. I know, but it made me happy that like they did like the women tell all, and one of the girls was crying about how even if they don't end up with Gary, like they made all of these amazing friends, oh. and I was like, oh my gosh, isn't this just what life is about? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just, it was the first hometown season that there was no parents there. Yeah, that did make me sad. I know they were like, we're not meeting each other's parents. We're meeting grandkids. And I was like, that's. Okay. Oh, you that knew it was going to be sad. a little different whenever it starts with, you know, whenever the bachelor's like putting, they're, they're like getting ready, right? Mm -hmm. This guy's putting an earring aid on, a yeah. hearing aid on. I gotta watch. It, I love it. The, okay, I can't know who won our because the finale came on last night, and I'm watching it after work today. Uh, I haven't. Like I so haven't. Excited. I didn't even know that it was. It was to the finale. Yeah. I don't know, but I know who I want to win. I'm keeping my fingers <laughs> crossed that I'm staying off TikTok. How old is the lady? Do you know? Maybe 65. Okay. So they've got the, like they got some life decades to left. Like they need friendship and companionship. Oh. Yeah. My aunt, my uh, grandma's sister, um, had a, like a companion basically after her husband passed and they spent like 10 years dating and traveling and having companionship and friendship so I think Katie would you ever go on the bachelor no really I don't think what I fit I the you? weight requirements <laughs> what you have to like put your weight in and I'm not are you are you really? serious yes I'm too big well now they're, they're changing everything they're and doing yeah. the golden bachelor yeah so. I just like I'm not very good in uncomfortable take, situations. Take that out of it, though. Take take whatever. Like, yeah. if, you, if you could just, they're like, hey, if you want to come on, come on. Like, would you would you go on? No, because I would get eliminated the first episode because I'd be so uncomfortable sitting in the corner like. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why they just, they just boost you up all night. Yeah. Like, have you seen the very first day whenever, the, like, the rose ceremony? It's like daylight outside. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an all night And thing. they feed you alcohol the whole time, so then. I would definitely be sleeping. One of the ladies yeah. fell asleep in this season. Really? Yeah, I would it, too. It was um, uh, Jimmy Kimmel's aunt. <laughs> I love that. That would be me. I'm a, I'm a sleepy girl, so if I had to go, like, all night until the morning, no, there would be, like, Definitely enough. My social battery would not last through one night no. of The Bachelor. No. Yeah, what I normally go to bed at like eight thirty or something, yeah. like yeah. nine o'clock. So that would be too Same. too much for me. And I don't do anything after work. I like get done and I work from home too. I walk down my stairs, put my jammies on, and lay on the couch with my dog for like four <laughs> hours, and then go to bed. And I'm like, gosh, today was exhausting. <laughs> like, there's no way I could handle The Bachelor. Oh man! So uh, there's been a couple people from Tulsa that've been on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know if I've heard like the greatest experiences. Like it's just like a just a completely different vibe out there. Like honestly, I think if I were to ever even consider going on something like that, it would be less for the romance and more for the friendships. Because yeah. all the girls always end up best friends. Yeah. And like you form like this tight bond and I'm all about having friends. Like, I right. just don't know how much I believe that that would really work though. Yeah. Because yeah. anytime that they talk about it, they're like, they're like, we have two happily married people and they've had like 35 seasons and i'm like yeah. that's not a really good ratio I think bachelor in paradise does better because they yeah. actually are together like 24 7 for like weeks yeah very true that it's pretty funny i like i like that one better have you been keeping up I with like that one bachelor. too well i haven't this season but i need to i like I that one that better one. yeah man so um what are some 
what are some of the things that you guys have coming up, like co- collaborations with businesses and stuff? Is there anything in the books? We're actually a Christmas hosting party. a or? Christmas party. Oh, yeah. I, I did go through your Instagram, and you've been celebrating Christmas since June. What's up with that? <laughs> Well, big, big Christmas girls. Yeah, we can't be <laughs> jolly for five months. <laughs> so, yeah, what are you doing? What's coming up? Katie. Oh, we're having Tell a holiday party <laughs> on December 7th from 6 to 9 p.m. We're having a holiday party at 473 in the Kendall Whittier District. It's a really, really cool bar, indoor, outdoor. It's going to be dog friendly. It is benefiting Sky Took Paws and Claws Animal Rescue. So, they're going to have adoptable pets there. And then we've got pop ups from TGI Promo. I just did a holiday collab with them. So, they're bringing their whole collection. Um, Forever Linked is doing like the burn or the Forever bracelets. Mm-hmm. And then Kylie Ross is doing like hair, hair tinsel. tinsel. So, there's going to be a ton of giveaways. Um, they may, I don't know if they've told us, they, they do those like little igloos. Yeah. Too. Yeah. That would be so fun. So I'm hoping they have those set up there too, but it's like an open to the public event where like she said, donations for sky tip paws and claws. Mm-hmm. Um, anything you want to donate to those little. Yeah. And we friends. have amazing giveaways like Tulsa and Oklahoma city businesses have given some of the most amazing stuff. And so if you bring a bag of dog food, a bag of cat litter, you get entered in five, or you get five tickets to enter in whatever you want. If you donate $5 to Sky Took Paws and Claws, you get one ticket to enter. So we're going to have giveaways all night. Um, I just really Good hope time. it does well because I'm yeah. so excited about it. I've been down there before. They completely changed that whole place up. So yeah, cool. I and love Kendall Whittier. Yeah, yeah, and I almost went a couple of days ago because I had a uh, Tulsa bite girl on uh-huh. uh, she, she, it's Tulsa bite her, her page. I just call her yeah. Tulsa bite girl. Yes. She's so nice. Yeah. She is and, so nice. and she told me about this place. She says, I know that you eat Kava and Chipotle all the time. Yeah. She goes, you need to go try this place out. And there's, and there's a, I guess a food truck. A food Calaveras. Truck? No, it's called, um, is it the one at four, seven, three? Yeah, it's called Bowl Appetit. Yes, I've heard Yum. amazing things it about it. It looks amazing. Okay, I need to try But yeah. they don't open until 5 p.m. So I was trying to go for lunch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then so I was just like, okay, I guess I'm going to have to go down there and sometime after Maybe 5. Maybe they'll be at our <gasps> Come event. Come to our event. It's <laughs> they, for men and women. You just have to be over 21. Bring yes. your dogs. There we Cat. go. Yeah. <laughs> no babies allowed, though. No, sorry. You got to leave them home. Dang. <laughs> So t- the reason I bring that up is because I, Stephen was talking about like, you know, he, he got his thing with having the best burger uh-huh. and he told me about, which by the way, I'm curious, what's the best burger you guys have had? I love Ron's. Ron's? The garage. E- every single time that I try to go there, it's closed. Really? It's on Sundays. <laughs> oh. Every time, every time I'm just like, I'm craving a gr- burger. Yeah. And then really the garage? Well, I think I just like it because it was in my college town and it was uh, like my splurge meal that I'd get on DoorDash. So gotcha. these are probably going to judge me, but I also really like burgers from uh, Burger King. From Burger King? Oh, yeah. girl. Oh, I think you might have to step <laughs> out of this one. Let's go you ahead and take your mic, <laughs> take her offline. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. I don't Gosh, know why. That's just kind of nasty. I don't know. I it, To me, it tastes like my dad. Talk about my supporting dad local. just whipped it up on the grill. <laughs> Brooke has this really know. good local place she recommends. It's <laughs> called Burger King. You get a little hat. How much are they paying you? <laughs> Nothing. Because Brooke makes her entire salary a year in Burger King sponsorship. That is, cr- that's pretty, I don't, you would have to pay me like at least a couple hundred dollars for me really? to eat a burger there. I don't like go there all the time, but like if I'm like craving a burger, that would be one of my top picks. Yeah. I do love One of your food. top picks, like you're talking and top three. And I don't three. eat fast food, like oh, ever. I remember my burger, okay. Howdy Burger. Oh. I've oh. never had that. Oh, okay. Right. So yes. good. It's at mo- I don't know if it's at Mother and Market anymore, but they also have a like brick and mortar outside of Mother and Market on Route 66, I believe. Yeah. I don't like, know what street it's on, but 11, you would like it. Maybe? So uh, Stephen told me about OMG Burger. Have you guys ever had an Owasso? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's amazing. I've only been to Owasso once. I need to go more. Yeah. Yeah, that's growing too. Yeah. yeah. I've heard that the Costco over there is better than the one we have yeah. here. My roommate got a Costco card, so I'm like, girl, can I come <laughs> I you? have a theory that if you live in Owasso and work in Owasso, you don't need to leave for anything. No. No. They have I, everything. I agree. I agree. My sister and it's I wanted little... to go to TJ Maxx, and we showed up. It's a TJ Maxx home goods combo. We went nuts. <laughs> our eyes were like falling out of our heads. I was like, do I need to move to Owasso? Like, and I like guess it has better house. stuff too. I just went to. I just went to lunch with, so I'm working with a builder that they just, uh, so starting next year, starting in 
February, we'll have the first four houses built. There's 50 houses. It's about eight minutes away from uh, Owasso. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I had lunch with them and then a couple of realtors and uh, I was like, what do you guys got going on? And she was like, I'm going to Home Goods. She's like, there's so much better stuff here than in Tulsa. Yes. And I'm like, what? And it's to next door to a Target that is fully stocked. I was like, <laughs> this is like the mecca of civilization. Right? That's <laughs> hilarious. And so I go there. It's a bar. And and then, of course, I have, I, I, you know, we have Mav with us. And and I'm, I, I open the door and then they just go, no babies. <laughs> oh, <laughs> It's not a baby, it's a toy. toy baby. <laughs> and, then, and then I go, uh, and they're, they're like, you can go in the back and get your food, because I guess the bar doesn't even have a kitchen. Like, they have the truck in the back. Oh. And then so we just walk to the back, and I go, hey, you know, what, what should I get? You know, what do you guys recommend? And the guy goes, everything is good. <laughs> oh, I hate when that happens. Like, okay. just tell me. But like, what's the best? He, he said, he said, if it's not good, we take it off the menu. Oh. <laughs> I like that. I so love did how you I'm like giving, the food? I love how I'm giving them a shout out, but also like putting them on blast. <laughs> There's so nothing you like worse it? though when like your server, you're like, what's good? And they say like five things and they don't sound good. And you're just sitting there. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay like, thank else? you for that. But I'm going to go ahead and order this. And you didn't say this at all. <laughs> so I go, I go, okay, but like, what do you recommend? He goes, anything. And and then so I, so I go, okay, so I get, I get, you know, a burger it was an amazing burger. It okay. was. Yeah. It was. So he wasn't lying. I mean, I just had one, right? And then, but we could, we had to take it back home because we couldn't eat it there. It's probably like soggy when you got home. The buns were like gross. <laughs> no, we were with some friends that live in Owasso. Okay. And then so like we were all like, the way back to Jinx, you'd get like <laughs> basically a rock by then. Like. Okay. So that happened to me with that. I went, I think it's called, is it called Claude's? It's over oh, like on yes. Admiral. Yeah. Admiral. You uh-huh. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I haven't been there. I wouldn't recommend it, okay. but I did get it, and I drove all the way back home, and it was, like, cold, yeah. and then I was just like, this is gross. A burger has to be eaten pretty quick. Yeah. Man. Same with, I'm obsessed with chicken and the wolf, and it's literally my favorite food in the entire world, and if it's not, like, immediately to my house, I don't want it. <laughs> Same thing with yep. burgers. Like, I need it to be as warm and as fresh as possible. Well, it sounds That's like you difference. live in the right part of town. <laughs> I do. There's like they just built a new one like right by me. They did. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought I it was just it, like it, it was just uh, at the Mother Road, right? And yeah, then, and they still have the Mother Road one, but they also have it's the old Lone Wolf that was across the street from TU. They moved that um, Lone Wolf out. Now it's Chicken and the Wolf, and they now bought what used to be a Sandbar Yard Bar Blue Moon or Blue Rose, whatever it yeah. was called. And it's a chicken going to become a chicken and the wolf lone wolf concept. Wow. I love that because that location is so cool. Yes. I hate that like nothing can just like stay there. Yeah. Are you talking about the yard barn uh, thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It used to be like the blue rose. Are you like, talking on the river? Yeah. Like oh, off 41st Street, I oh know. you're talking about that place. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about a different place over by um, like the hospital where Cherry Street set and stuff. The, the, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, there's like nothing there. Yeah, and it was Blue Rose for like decades, a long wasn't time. it? time, yeah. And then it was Sandbar and Yard Bar for like one season, and I never got to go, but Either. it looked really cool. Yeah. And now it's g- getting taken over by the Chicken and the Wolf Lone Wolf people, which I'm like pumped about because everything they do is good. Good. So one of the questions I asked you last time that I'm curious, uh, whether it was it's new or not, but one of the questions I asked uh, Jimena at Tulsa Bite as well too is, wh- I've been, I've posted a handful of videos about, about, you know, the most expensive and the least expensive places. And, you know, we're very blessed to live in a state and a city where we have, it's very affordable to Mm -hmm. live here. But I mean, of course there's always the trolls right online Mm -hmm. and they're always commenting and saying, you know, of course, like I would die rather than live in Oklahoma or something. Right. So, so give me both of you guys, give me a few places. I don't have to do restaurants. It can be restaurants. It can be whatever of, of what you think that, you know, it's something that people wouldn't expect that we have. And their all view is a good one. That's where I take people that like are from a big city, yeah. especially if it's like a Friday night and the drillers are doing um, fireworks, fireworks or- because it's good food. And also the atmosphere is cool. Yes. Um, I haven't been there, but I want to try that little water area in Oklahoma City that you can like surf. Yes. And like whitewater raft. Oh, I've been there before. It's I lost really my cool. GoPro there. Oh, God. Yeah, but it's a cool place. I mean, 
that's the only place I know of in Oklahoma that you could whitewater raft. <laughs> I know. I told somebody that I go, uh, I said, Hey, I have a, this is like a couple of years ago, but I said, I have a bachelor party that, uh, that I'm going to and we're going whitewater rafting. Yeah. And they're like, was it in OKC? Yeah. They were like, are you going to Colorado? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, Oklahoma city. Yeah. And they're like, how do you whitewater raft you in Oklahoma? You can probably it's tell cool. me, is it a, probably safer than if you were out in the wilderness? Um, <laughs> I'm closer I would, to a yeah. hospital if yeah. that happens. <laughs> I would say so, but it's... I mean, you lost a GoPro, so it's still pretty <laughs> crazy, I, it, I guess. It does, because they can manually, you know, put the, the, the levels of it's how hard it is. It's where the OU rowing team practices. It's like an Olympic-level yes, rowing. Yes, I've seen that. I've so seen they that. can, like, do, like, Olympic-level like, yeah, rafts. The, it's, I, I would say it's actually maybe a little bit more dangerous because it's it's not as big as a river right. so you're constantly kind of bumping a little bit mm -hmm. but okay. it kind of makes it more fun but it, it is really fun yeah. yeah that's one place that yeah i still haven't been but i you think that's so been? cool that we have that yeah it's it is pretty cool and it's a little too cold now to go but yeah, for sure i love whitewater yeah. rafting I've, I've been twice in colorado and it's it's literally it's so, so fun, fun. <laughs> i've only but been once when i was little and we had to do the baby like rapids or whatever and i still thought it was so fun i was like this is the best I've never been, but yeah, I'm there's down. a lot of places in Tulsa though. Cherry Street, Brookside, anything in that area. I like when my friends come to visit and I drive them through um, those. They think it's really cool that everything's like in one mm -hmm. little area. Our bar is always a good one. Like my friends and I always just go because then you Brunch. can just kind of like bebop around and yeah, any place that I can just like get out and walk to a couple places and then it's a good Uber home at the end. Good time. Yeah. yeah. Ubering home is probably a good idea there. I'm still a big fan of shuffles. I've shuffles never, oh, cool. oh, I've been there one time and they just have so many games that I'm it's like, like, it's a little overwhelming. overwhelming. Yeah, it is really <laughs> overwhelming. I've only been there once, but they have some crazy games that I'm like, I've ne I didn't never know this even heard of this. Yeah. yeah. And they have like duet right food. around the corner. Duet. It's oh, amazing. I do. That's where I broke my ankle. <laughs> at duet? You got to go to one Oh, wait, of those no, no, dinners. not duet. Sorry. At, I was thinking the dueling piano bar. Oh, yeah. What's that called again? Oh, I'm assuming Shady you Ubered keys. that night. Yes, shady and I have a horrible. <laughs> she probably had a really expensive Uber at Ambly Ambulance. No, I was in sneakers. I just roll my ankles so bad from a lifetime of playing soccer. Like my ankles are so weak, and I just get out of the Uber with my sister and my friends, and I step on a, like a slightly ajar um, brick on the ground. Rolled my ankle, and I was like, "Oh my god, I think I broke my ankle." And my sister was like, "Don't be a baby. Get You're up." You're fine. And it was like 9 p.m., and I ended up staying out till like 1:30, like running around. You really broke it? Yeah. <laughs> no, like it was so roll. It was just sprained. It was a bad sprain, but at the beginning, they told me I had broken my fibula and put me in a boot, and they were like, oh "It's your non-weight bearing." But then when I went to Tulsa Bone and Joint, they did an X-ray, and they were like, "We think it's an old break from soccer that just like didn't heal up right." Oh my Because I was gosh. a little notorious for just like not. So I decided to uh, run a half marathon this Sunday. So yeah, I saw that. that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Is it the oh, Route 60? Yeah. I really want to run a full marathon before I turn 30. So I want to, and then of course me rupture my Achilles. I think yeah. that it'll be, it'll be cool to, be, you know, do it before uh, it, it's been a full year on that. So Some will call it the biggest comeback of the century. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So what are some different uh, things that you guys are seeing on TikTok and our Instagram as far as like algorithm and stuff? Is there anything that you guys are seeing that has changed quite a bit or what's, what's working for you guys? How many times do you guys post a day or a week? I try to post once a day. On once Instagram. a day. Mm -hmm. What it about depends. you? depends. Like if I'm doing something on my house, like painting my fireplace, I'll post like, 10 times a week about it because on your feed or on your story on my tiktok not oh, on my on, instagram on your, okay, yeah instagram TikTok. still stresses me out <laughs> <laughs> i i did post a like get to know me the other day because i've like doubled my instagram followers in the last couple of months and i've decided i'm gonna start posting more so yes. <laughs> i'm getting there out of my go. comfort zone that's what this next year of life is about is getting out of there my we comfort. go because i think so you TikTok, might end up on the bachelor who knows? Lord, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I want to go on one of Nick and Vanessa Lachey's. <laughs> They're those people on Netflix that do like Love is Blind and yes. they uh, have like the most shambly shows ever. And they, I devour them. They release the episodes and like, I cannot focus on anything else. <laughs> they they also do the ultimatum. Yeah. Absolutely oh. not. I would never. Nightmare. Or insane. Yeah. Do married, at or married at first sight. I, I do love Married at first sight. That one's, that one's you would do that one? Maybe. Really? I don't know. You I would. Uh, I'd be. Right? I would be too scared <laughs> that I would. I like, can get out, right? I don't. I don't hide my emotions very well, so I would just be like, like 
I don't think I could be vulnerable with a person that I don't know, like that I don't trust with my life. Like, right. <laughs> I don't know. I think I would just be so awkward because I like wouldn't know them and then they wouldn't get to know me because I was so awkward and then we would just have to get divorced. So. You, you say you're so awkward, but I feel like you've, you've grown so much. Like I've I feel never like thought you were our, awkward. In our world, like we do all of these events with strangers. Yeah. So I feel like it is taking us out of our comfort zone already. It's helping The only a lot. difference would be there's people recording you all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm because my I, it was nerve wracking though because I think I thought of my TikTok as like a private story, like my Snapchat private story, which all of my friends know for like. 10 years I would post everything I was doing on there like I was famous and so it's like <laughs> why wouldn't I just not post this on TikTok and then I kind of forgot that like real people see it and so now if anyone <laughs> in public is like oh I follow you on TikTok I'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> I thank you I, I, it's so crazy to me that people think that Instagram is just so much more personal yeah and I think it's because it's been around longer most of us got it when we were younger. So there's a lot more yeah. history on there and, and I people have, that we do personally know and have known for but, a while. But with the yeah. algorithm now, like literally I, so after I post, I try to go and scroll a little bit to, uh, you know, see what people are posting and it's the same people every time. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm following like almost a thousand people. So it's like, I don't like that about no, Instagram. I want the Instagram algorithm. feed to go back to, to so, uh, like, I want to see my friend's stuff. Like I want to see my friend's babies. Yes. And yeah. But that's what I'm saying is that people, if you post something, most likely your friends are that you're worried about seeing see it because yeah. they got to switch that little following. And I hate that part. That yeah. Instagram change. Yeah. Wait, you can do that. Yeah. Oh yeah. wait, that There's solves so many literally updates. all my problems. A <laughs> yeah. huge hack. Followed the CEO of Instagram and you're literally able to and, and of course if you watch the whole thing, if you like it, the the algorithm will know to show it to you every time. So every time I get on, it shows me when he posts and he mm -hmm. posts normally like once a week on tips and tricks of like new things that are coming on. So um, I have to send his page. I don't even know who runs it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, literally have no idea well we all know that suck is on the back just controlling him so yeah. <laughs> but yeah i'll send it to you it's adam uh adam something i don't know i don't know yes. if i like relate to the billionaires though so i never follow them because i'm like <laughs> everything they post about is like so unrelatable to me i'm like oh, okay. i think the yeah. only the only big accounts that i follow that are like you know, I, it's probably suck in Adam and it's just because so I, I can get the updates of, yeah. of what's going on, but like algorithm. yes. Thank you guys for coming on. I really had a, this was different yeah. than, than even the last one. It's different than most of my podcasts, I, but I really, really enjoyed it. And, uh, the last couple questions I have for you is for any new or, or current creators that have been creating for a while. What's, what's a piece of advice that you have for them? You don't have to have a niche. Yeah, yeah, I that's guess a good mine one. is truly just show your personality. It doesn't have to be scripted. Just show yourself and you'll build a following of people that genuinely feel like they know you and have some sort of connection to you, which is awesome because then you have a really dedicated following right. of people that are like minded, which is what I really wanted. So, yeah, that's that's really good advice. Brooke, you got anything else? Um, I think I said this last time, but I just strongly believe like the creators that we do have in our community, like we all started from somewhere and we are always willing and open to help anybody who has questions or yeah. are willing to mm -hmm. grow, like ask us. We aren't going to ignore and you. Just do it. <laughs> like this has changed my life. This is yeah. a year ago. I had 3000 followers on TikTok and had not gotten a single Instagram follower in like 10 years because I wasn't posting anything. So it's just changed my life in one year and mm -hmm. I can't imagine where another year from now is. So just do it. Don't yeah. be afraid. Nobody's going to make fun of you. We'll cheer you on. Yep. Yeah. That's so good. And where can people find you guys? Instagram, TikTok. I've started on Facebook after talking with you the oh, first you time. Yeah. Um, Are you posting your reels on there? Yes. That's good. Ooh. Not all of them. Oh, Cause so I'm still trying to get it in my routine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, by the way, that's the only one that I don't put a song behind it because they won't monetize it. Yeah, I've noticed so, that. Yeah, noticed so that. TikTok doesn't either. And what 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 are, what are the handles, guys? You, you oh, people uh, people are just yeah. <laughs> uh, just think, search my face. Out. I guess. <laughs> um, on Instagram, it's Brooke C Bellender. On TikTok, it is Brooke Bellender One. 
and Facebook is just Brooke Bellender. There we go. Soon to be. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Soon to be Brooke something else. <laughs> um, I'm Catherine V. Harris on both TikTok and Instagram. I swear I'm going to up my Instagram game. <laughs> yes. But yeah, go ahead and follow along. <laughs> there we go. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you.